The next item of business is topical questions, and at question number one, I call Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Senior Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what assistance it can provide to the investigation into the capsizing of the tugboat MV Biter on the River Clyde on the 24th of February. Minister Mary McCallum. Uh, Presiding Officer, I should like to uh, begin by extending uh, mine and the Scottish Government as a whole uh, our sincere sympathies and condolences um, to the families and friends of those who have lost loved ones in this incident. Um, and I should also like to put on thanks uh, on record my thanks to first responders on the scene uh, for their actions uh, during this uh, tragic incident. Um, I know the, the community will be in shock. I know there will be a lot of uh, people who wish to understand what has happened, uh, most of all those who are mourning. Um, the investigation of marine incidents involving the loss of vessels is a reserved matter led by the Marine Accident Investigation Branch of the UK Department for Transport and they are currently investigating the cause of the capsizing of MV Biter. Uh, meanwhile, the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency are supporting the Port Authority to deal with any salvage and counter-pollution response. Scottish Government officials have been advising the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency with respect to any potential environmental impacts. Um, although uh, Scottish Government officials have not been asked to support the, the Marine Accident Investigation Branch uh, and their investigatory work, and as a routine we would not be expected to do so, uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Rural Affairs and myself, we have asked our officials to keep us very much up to date with all relevant developments, and uh, I wish to offer the Scottish Government as a whole uh, a commitment to any support that we can offer. Stuart McMillan. I thank the Minister for that reply and I want to put on record my condolences to the families that affected by this incident and also my thank you to the emergency services for their swift response on Friday. Can the Minister give an assurance that the Scottish Government will provide any assistance required to help with the recovery of the vessel? Minister. Um, yes, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I should say I'm grateful to uh, Stuart McMillan for, for raising this question today. I know that it's something that he will be uh, deeply involved in with his constituency. Um, I would absolutely confirm um, Scottish Government officials. We, as I said previously, have been advising the, the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency with respect to that point about environmental impacts. Um, and in turn, the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency are supporting the Port Authority as they work to uh, do any counter-pollution and also uh, to provide support to any uh, recovery attempt. So, um, as I noted in my previous answer, that's all uh, happening while while the Marine Accident Investigation Branch of the Department for Transport are investigating the capsizing, uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Rural Affairs and I will be keeping very closely abreast of this. And again, I reiterate any support, all support that the Scottish Government can offer. Stuart McMillan. I thank the Minister for that. Um, the Minister touched upon the shock in the community, and the community is deeply shocked by this tragedy and have many, many questions as to how this happened. And clearly, that's what the investigations uh, will hopefully uncover in the months ahead. Does the Minister acknowledge, however, that the excellent network of third sector organisations in Inverclyde who provide emotional support and also a safe space for people and that they will be all the more important to my constituents and my community in the weeks and months ahead as the community comes to term with this tragedy? Minister. Absolutely, Presiding Officer, and Stuart McMillan makes uh, an excellent point. On behalf of the Government, I would like to uh, once again acknowledge the work of first responders, but equally, as Stuart McMillan highlights, the work of volunteers in the third sector uh, in response to this tragic accident. I'd like to thank everybody involved uh, for their efforts at this difficult time. I know that that will be ongoing uh, in the community and I should, as well as um, offering to keep updated with this matter, to offer any support the Scottish Government can provide, I'd also offer to keep in touch with Stuart McMillan um, with any um, helpful uh, offers of support that the Scottish Government can uh, give him in his constituency role. Thank you. Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, there's very little to add by way of condolence that's already been said by other members and these benches certainly pass on our sympathies and thoughts to all those affected by this tragedy off the shores of Greenock. Last week it brought back very painful memories of the 2007 tragedy of a similar nature and I know the community will pull together in these circumstances. My only other question in addition to the third sector support that is on offer to people in the community is what specific or direct immediate support could Scottish Government agencies offer the families, friends and colleagues of the two crewmen who were sadly lost? 
Minister. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the, Jamie Green is, is quite right to reiterate those points. As regards uh, the family and friends um, who are now mourning, um, the Scottish Government will be very happy to offer them support and indeed the support networks around them, um, who I know will be critical in the following days. Uh, I should say we are still at a sensitive point where Police Scotland have not yet uh, formally release the identity of the individuals, although their families have been uh, notified. So once we get past that, that formality in the process, I should be very glad to understand how we can support the family and the, the, the folks who will be supporting them. Paul O'Kane. Thank you, Presiding Officer. On behalf of these benches, can I associate myself with the comments of Stuart McMillan and Jamie Green on the tragedy in Greenock on Friday? I spent yesterday, indeed, at New Parish Church in Port Glasgow, where a space for reflection uh, had been provided to local people to ensure that they could uh, you know, have time to channel um, what is a, a palpable sense of grief in the local community. Uh, I wonder if I can ask the Minister, how will she ensure that uh, messages about uh, marine safety and ensuring that local people have confidence in what is happening on the river, uh, it gets out and about in the community, and a community as close-knit as Greenock. Minister. Thanks, Presiding Officer. And I think Paul O'Kane's uh, use of that palpable sense of grief is absolutely right and very accurately depicts how um, the community will be feeling. Uh, for our part, the Scottish Government is very keen that we allow the space for um, the, 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 the Mar uh, Marine Accident Investigation Branch as part of the Department for Transport to do the work that they need to do on investigating the capsizing. Um, but that, that work on the ground, of supporting the community, of supporting uh, those who will support the community, we very much see as something that we can be involved in. So as I've offered to Stuart McMillan, I would extend that to Paul O'Kane to let me know how you best think that we can do that. And I should uh, certainly be uh, happy to consider any and, uh, any and all offers of support. Thank you. Question number two, Maurice Golden. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on when the deposit return scheme will launch. Minister Lorna Slater. Scotland's deposit return scheme remains on course to launch on the 16th of August this year. I continue to urge producers to begin their res registration for the scheme if they haven't already and to contact the scheme administrator, Circularity Scotland, as soon as possible for advice. The launch of a scheme of this complexity that every single person in Scotland will participate in isn't easy, but it is significant and it is transformational. I am grateful to businesses of all sizes that are continuing to make good progress as they prepare for launch in August of this year. Maurice Golden. Uh, I thank the Minister for that answer, but however much the Minister wants to pretend otherwise, the reality is a delay is now almost inevitable at some point. The question is, do we take an informed and workable pause to rescue the scheme or wait for the Scottish Government's staggering level of incompetence to force us into a messy delay. Because when the deadline for producer registration runs out at midnight, we pass a point of no return. A workable pause then becomes extremely difficult because businesses will be liable for a delay, even though it is through no fault of their own. Businesses need urgent assurance so can the Minister confirm three points? How many producers have signed up? How will the Minister ensure businesses are not held liable for a delay? And has the application for an internal market exemption been officially submitted? Minister. Uh, I thank the member very much for those questions. The member is confusing today's deadline with uh, producers becoming a liability with the scheme. Those are two separate matters. Today's deadline is for producers to register with the scheme. The scheme would go live on August 16th, and I think the member is confusing uh, liabilities around that delay, which maybe have been discussed in the press. I can absolutely confirm that the Scottish Government has been following the agreed process to seek the exclusion of the DRS regulations from the Internal Markets Act. This has been the subject of discussion with the UK Government beginning in 2021, when we saw a broad exclusion under the Resources and Waste Common Framework, when an exclusion was agreed covering Scotland's single-use plastic regulations. We will continue to press the UK Government for a decision as soon as possible to give businesses the clarity that they need. Maurice Golden. Uh, thank you, President Officer. That, that was very helpful. So, no, their application hasn't been submitted. And also, for any producers out there, according to the Minister, she has guaranteed that the legal agreement you have signed with Circularity Scotland bears no liability for your business. 
That's on record. But this morning, the Minister effectively accused hundreds of businesses of having no credibility. More than 500 businesses signed an open letter to the Minister calling for the scheme to be paused. As of MSPs, including myself, and having spent 10 years in the waste management sector, I won't take any lectures from the Minister presiding over a car crash. Businesses are staring ruin in the face, while the Minister seems to be closing her eyes, crossing her fingers and hoping for the best. So with hours left until registration closes, will the Minister now see sense and extend registration to avoid catastrophe? Minister. Thank you very much, the member. The member has misrepresented what I've said with respect to the liability to, in terms of today's deadline. The member also re uh, references a letter that is several weeks old from producers. And the member is correct in the sense that we are still working through issues with small producers, but the letter the member refers to is several weeks old and predates the significant work we have done with small producers, including last week, where we've listened to them, we've put in place Two, £22 million pounds of cash flow support, exactly what these businesses were asking for to help them with their day one costs. We have put in place a practical labelling solution, again, exactly what small importers were asking for. We continue to work with small producers to make sure that they can become fully compliant with the scheme for that August 16th launch. Christine Graham. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Minister, I have raised previously craft breweries such as Brought Nails and Traquea Brewery. I have also raised Dryden and Aqua Glass Recycling Company, all in my constituency. Today, I can add Vilna Wines Limited, a wine retailer in Peebles, also in my constituency. They are all at a loss with regard to the deposit return scheme. They are all confused by it. How flexible will Circularity Scotland be regarding registrations in these circumstances? Minister. Thank you very much. Circularity Scotland is here to help. Circularity Scotland is the organisation put together by industry. Uh, MSPs will have received a letter from Circularity Scotland uh, in the last week which details how it is created and what, you know, gives some examples of some of the industry players that were involved in creating it. Circularity Scotland is there to help businesses comply with the regulations that were passed by this Parliament in 2020. So if businesses are confused, if they don't understand, what they need to do is contact Circularity Scotland to find out how Circularity Scotland can help them to comply. I know every business is different and every business have their own concerns. That is why Circularity Scotland is here to help them and I would encourage them to do that. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Last week, Labour proposed a delay in the introduction for small producers in the scheme, which SNP and Green MSPs voted down. Yet, days later, the Minister said she is now actively considering such a delay. So, when will the Minister make a decision on that request for a delay for small businesses? Because isn't it the case that the Minister is losing the confidence of small businesses? She has lost the confidence of whoever is going to be the next First Minister, and she is now absolutely losing control of this scheme altogether. Minister. Um, I think the member is not accurate there. Uh, some of the contenders were absolutely uh, supportive of the deposit return scheme. The deposit return scheme has significant support across the board. Uh, from part, you know, it was supported by parties in this chamber and you know, many, many colleagues have been pushing us to get on with it because of the environmental benefits that it delivers. The, the asks from, the small, from small producers we have been systematically working through. Their, you know, their number one ask uh, a couple of weeks ago was about the cash flow issue, which we have, we have work, made a proposed a solution on, and the labelling issue. You are right, the ask on the table right now is around, is around that grace period, and we are seriously considering that and looking into what the implications are. I have been listening all along, and we will be continuing to work with business to bring them into compliance with our, with our legislation as passed by this Parliament in 2020. Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you. The Finance Secretary, who presum presumably signed off these proposals around the Cabinet uh, table, uh, has suggested that if it implemented, it could lead to economic carnage. In light of this complete breakdown in ministerial responsibility, and in order to rebuild confidence within the business community, the wider public, and even in this SNP Green coalition, will the Minister now agree to pause to undertake that review and ensure that the proposals brought forward in Scotland command that confidence and can be as successful as we have seen in countries around Europe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minister. Uh 
I thank the member for the question. Implementing of schemes like our deposit return scheme in Scotland is a challenge wherever that's true. And that has been true for successful schemes around the world. That before they're implemented, they look challenging. Uh, people have to make those adjustments. But after they're in place, people are, you know, these matters are well understood. The situation where we are today is that hundreds of millions of pounds have been invested by Scottish businesses toward the launch of this programme. Over 500 jobs have either been recruited or are in the process of being recruited. The sorting centres sites have been set up uh, and the trucks to do the reverse logistics have been ordered. This is all in place moving towards that August 16th deadline. Those businesses that have made that substantial, hundreds of millions of pounds, the jobs created in that, those businesses only get their return on investment when the scheme launches. These businesses are counting on us to do our part to launch the scheme on August 16th. So my role here is to make sure that all businesses in Scotland are able to become compliant and participate participate in the scheme in a pragmatic and practical way. And that is what we're doing. The issue on the table isn't around the launch date. It will launch on August 16th. The issue on the table is how we support all businesses in Scotland, especially our small businesses, to fully participate in the system and therefore gain the benefits of the system. Mark Cruskell. Thank you. Can I ask the Minister what impact the continued uncertainty presented by the failure of the UK Government to issue an Internal Market Act exclusion will have on the deposit return scheme? Minister. Thank the Member very much for the question. Uh, there is an agreed process between the UK Government and the devolved governments for excluding certain areas from the Internal Market Act. We first raised the need for an exclusion in 2021, and since then we have had constructive engagement between the Scottish and UK Government over the issue. Concerned by the length of time taken to reach an exclusion, on the 31st of January, the Deputy First Minister wrote to the Chancellor and the Secretary of State for levelling up housing and communities on both the need for a UK Government decision on the application of VAT, which we have now thankfully had, and, to uh, and uh, an AIMA exclusion. We now need the UK Government to issue that exclusion for deposit, Scotland's deposit return scheme from the Internal Market Act. Given these are long-standing plans that we will make an important contribution to our climate change and recycling targets and will give businesses the clarity they need, I expect a decision from the UK Government on this matter as soon as possible. Daniel Johnson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. So today we hear that from Lorna Slater that it's all on track. Uh, yesterday we heard from Hamza Youssef uh, that there needs to be a pause and Kate Forbes says there will be carnage. Three different ministers, three different positions on DRS. Can the minister confirm that section two of the ministerial code has been suspended with regard to DRS? Minister. Uh, the, min uh, the member is not accurate with what he said with respect to what Hamza Youssef said. He, he, Hamza Youssef mentioned the grace period for sm that small producers have requested and as I've said uh, to the member here, this is a matter, for dis this is a matter that for uh, discussion and consideration because I want to do everything we can to help small producers engage with this scheme. But we are working together with industry to launch this scheme on August 16th this year. And Co-Cab Stewart. Um, Kat Jones, director of the Association for the Protection of Rural Scotland, said we are in the middle of a climate crisis with litter plaguing our towns and countryside. The price of any further delay or weakening of the deposit return scheme uh, system would frankly be unbearable. Does the minister agree? Minister. Thank you for the member for that question. Yes, of course, we have to take bold and ambitious action now to tackle the climate emergency. Our deposit return scheme will launch in August and will be a major part of our efforts to reduce littering, cut emissions and build a more circular economy. Our scheme will reduce littering by a third and increase recycling rates of single-use drinks containers toward 90%. The scheme will reduce CO2 emissions by 4 million tonnes over 25 years, the equivalent of taking 83,000 cars off the road. Myself, government officials and Circularity Scotland continue to meet regularly with industry to ensure a pragmatic approach to the implementation of DRS. Thank you. That concludes topical questions. The next item of business is a debate on motion 7942 in the name of Claire Baker. On behalf of the Economy and Fair Work Committee, on retail and town centres in Scotland. I'll just give members a moment or two to organise themselves. <laughs> 